Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and traders around the globe. We from at my market say welcome to our real time daily trading idea webinars. In this webinar, we have five different days, so five different traders with five different trading styles. Yes, and we would like to screen the markets, discussing what's going on um, at the moment on the markets, and for sure answering here your questions. But uh, first of all, please be aware of the risks here with the leveraged products. So leveraged products are complex uh, products so, uh, of margins. So please be aware that all um, you are testing is maybe as an example here in the demo account, uh, how it works. So, and please be aware that all we're showing and presenting here today is just a personal opinion of our traders and not an advice for investing. So uh, you already heard about this, hopefully. So they have uh, new rules here in our branch. So until the 1st of August this year, we have the ESMA regulation. And uh, this is a uh, leverage restriction for retail clients. So for example, here on the right side, you see that the Euro uh, USD dollar, it's not anymore like 1 to 500. So it's only 1 to 30, for example. And what does it mean about the margin? You can see here on this slide as well. But you have different options. For example, maybe you are able to enter in the professional client status. So here you have on this slide, uh, what does it mean? And uh, what are the yeah, pros and cons you get with these uh, singular uh, statuses? So and yeah, for more details, I uh, contact our customer service. Here you have a picture for me. My name is Tim Tam. I'm an account manager from Berlin. So we do this webinar in the co-moderation. So do we have, we have a pleasure with Dirk. So today is Friday. And um, yeah, in a couple of moments, Dirk will have connected us here to um, us as well. And yeah, show and presenting here his view on the markets. Here we have a quick overview of some of our offerings. For example, here our best seller, the DEX 30. We offer with typical fixed spread of only 0 0.8 points during the main trading hours. These and other products you can also trade in mini contracts. So, and yeah, on the right side, you see some of our awards here for our products and customer services. So please feel free for any questions or wishes um, yeah, to get in touch with us. So um, all our contact data you find on our website. So here we have, um, yeah, just in, uh, to inform you, one world global offering. So we are an international broker and have different licenses all over the world. What does it mean exactly? So uh, also you can ask our customer service um, for more and detailed information. So that's it for me for the moment. Good morning to you, Dirk. I uh, hope you're doing well. You have the screen and the stage is yours. Yes, good morning, Tim. Good morning, guys. And just uh, let us have a quick look at my screen here and another screen. Um, looking at something up for you guys. First of all, transmitting the screen. Hopefully, you can see the screen. And of course, hopefully, the, the, the sound is clear. Um, we, we got a couple of, uh, in, um, yeah, let's say, data this morning and even at night from the Asian um, trading. Um, and, and if you look at Chinese data the, the, this, this night, it's kind of funny on the one side and it's kind of um, make me, makes me frightening on the other side that uh, data like the Chinese data is um, interpreted very bad today because they said uh, that the industrial production and the, the retail numbers, um, yeah, so they, they, came, they came up um, a little bit less than anticipated. But uh, if you look at the numbers, these are numbers like plus 8%, plus 7% and stuff like that. Uh, I wish German data or European data would be like that. <laughs> uh, in the end, um, let's have a look first, first of all at the key forecast for the next years to come. And this, this is very important, I guess, um, if you look at the world and uh, a couple of developed and emerging uh, markets, you will see that uh, the, the, the projections, the GDP projections are um, uh, coming, up, coming out a little bit more or less than um, the years before, than anticipated before. So if you look at the world GDP, which is um, um, which was published around 3.1 and 3.0 percent. It's now re revised down to 2.9 percent. And if you look at a big uh, um, 
uh, yeah, economic powers, powerhouses like the US, um, they are speaking about 3% um, before and now re revise that down to 2.9% uh, and so on and so on. So things like that, uh, um, things like that make, make, make us, uh, yeah, let's say, uh, think about um, what is going on the next, the next month to come. Uh, it is very important, simply very important to, to, uh, to have a look at the, at the coming data of next week. Um, be aware that's the last full trading week. So the 17th of December until um, the 21st of um, December is the last full trading week this year. So almost this year 2018 is over. And so that means that you will have a look um, at a couple of major events next week. It's like the, the IFO index on Tuesday. It's like uh, uh, the, federal, the federal decision, so the Fed decision, um, uh, FOMC decision on Wednesday, 20 CET. And uh, on top of that, very important for the German DAX as well and a couple of um, European indices is uh, the quadruple witching day uh, and Friday, uh, which is taking place um, originally from the Eurex. So uh, very important uh, stuff the next week coming up and very important for the German DAX. As you can see the German DAX here, of course, that's uh, not my usual time frame, five minutes, just to show you that there is a jump. Um, I'm looking at the more, let's say, detailed like four hour charts um, to have a look at the last high here. Um, let us just close that one to have more uh, room here um, and, and just draw some Fibonacci retracements from the last high here and down to this uh, last low and um, having some, some kind of a little bit of a target to the upside, which is the 38 or 2 level at uh, 10,965, where we already came from. Um, and the next one is uh, the 23.6, which you are already retesting right now. So uh, better be uh, going back up in direction to the 11K marker um, regarding the fact, and I already spoke about that, Eurix uh, quadruple witching next week on Friday, because it could be interesting uh, to get a little bit of the big boys uh, in direction of the 11 and 11200 marker. And uh, if you want to check that out, you will find a lot of data at the Eurex website uh, regarding the facts about uh, open interest um, of um, DAX options and stuff like that. So it might be interesting to um, browse through that data. It's free data. You will find it at the Eurex website uh, regarding um, the threats about DAX options and DAX futures. Okay. Um, we opened a position this morning here at the DAX. Uh, it's, it's a DAX long position. And uh, this uh, the current stop level is um, 10 10 720s. If you are about to do the old school, just double click it. Uh, you will see that there is uh, the possibility of just uh, modifying that stop level and going, let's say, a little bit more up the road or to the entry zone or even um, a little bit of a, let's say, more modest um, uh, stop level um, just to be sure that you won't lose a, a couple of points. Um, it's very important to do so because uh, I spoke about it's almost the year's end and uh, it would be really bad and um, would make you sad be losing points and pips uh, just uh, very close to the Christmas party. Um, okay. Um, of course, we, besides the fact we are looking to the upside, we should mark a couple of um, projections to the downside as well. So if you just hide that to the one hour chart, just make it more visible for you guys, you will be um, taking the Fibonacci retracements from the downside here to the last high from yesterday. And um, of course, changing, changing the color from these uh, Fibonacci retracements, um, just into red, I guess, um, just do that. And um, then we will see a couple of projects, oops, a couple of projections to the downside here in direction 138.2 and 161.8. So here we go. And um, just to make it more visible, where we could end up at uh, the downside here as well. If you check out the longer term, longer term uh, DAX. Um, chart analyze, uh, analysis, you will see that there are negative projections to the downside, which lead us already to uh, a level sub the 10K marker. So that, that uh, there is a, a 161 longer term projection to the downside at 9,970. 9, so just to make you aware of the fact that uh, this 10K marker is nothing like a holy grail uh, not to crack. 
um, it's possible. It's still possible. You never know what's going on with the with the next uh, days to come uh, regarding all those facts about Chinese and U.S. Uh, U.S. U.S. trade negotiations. So this is very important just to observe that uh, as well. Um, this morning I um, opened a Euro-US dollar position, um, long position as well. Um, let's just check the market watch here. That one was opened at uh, 112.98. Um, um, with a with a target of 114.98, it's a, um, a swing trade setup. Just have a look at that one here as well, um, chart window, and closing that one here again. Doing that from the daily perspective and um, checking out the last levels. Um, um, important to say that we already um, have this so-called uh, New Year's low to the upside here, and we'll be checking out that and possibly doing that. On the four-hour chart, just to squeeze that a little bit more, and just to check out if this is the correct level. Yes, already realized that I forgot forgot to mark that um, black line in red here as well. Um, might skip that just in case of we don't waste time uh, on that one right now. So 61.8 level is something like is, is it's the the euro is dollar rate is dancing around. If you look at yesterday's yesterday's, um, let's say, commitments or yesterday's happenings around the um, European Central Bank rate decision, uh, nothing really big happened. So if you if you just read the the, the, the whole stuff about the ECB yesterday, um, you might be aware this this uh, target rates and uh, so that so-called rate is still 0.0% .0 and it will be uh, until uh, modestly uh, around summer or even in, in direction autumn 2019. Nothing will change like that. Even negative, negative um, facility rates um, when banks are um, parking money, they need to they need to simply pay um, a minus 0.4% of a so-called parking fee. Let's say it that way, a parking fee. And um, they won't change anything. And all they said is that they they won't be um, buying more. Um, bonds um, and, and that they will end up the bond purchases uh, until the rest of the year. So uh, that's a fact. Um, all they possibly are talking about is a new LTRO. So long-term refinancing operations are not off the table. So that possibly is uh, a case. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty interested how they will do that in the next month uh, to come. Possibly they will, let's say, they will create some special uh, tenders for Italy. Uh, and for Italian banks, for example, so that possibly is one of the of those or more than three or four ideas browsing around, um, um, possibly creatable. Okay, well, let's uh, have a look at the euro dollar weight where it might head to. Um, horizontal lines um, in direction so that 61 at late level is the first one to crack to the upside, of course. Um, the next, uh, let's say, target might be this 113.80s, um, and um, of course um, the uh, old high, the old high, 114.72. Uh, um, I'm speaking about the target of 114.98. Not on, only the reason, because I think it might be something like an overshoot here in the next weeks, uh, but in case of um, retesting that high here, that's 114.99. So that's the only reason uh, the target is 114.98. Um, that's nothing like an intraday trade. That's a swing setup, and, um, and that's why it is stopped um, with a 50 with a 50 pip stop. So that 50 pip stop, as you can count yourself, uh, from the the level of 112.98 is 112.48. So be aware that you should that you should or better could uh, use another stop loss, a couple of points sub mine, or a couple of points uh, above mine, just in case you are not. Um, yeah, making me guilty if the, uh, yeah, let's say a position might be stopped out directly at my stop loss. Sometimes happens. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look at a couple of other markets. Let's just check the market watch here. And um, going back to, for example, uh, last week uh, where we spoke about uh, the bond future. Um, so if you check out the Bund future here, um, we spoke about um, a possible trade box uh, scenario where we might short the, the Bund future. Uh, so far, so good. Um, if you already took that one out, it might be more in, in, into points. Now getting back up to this trading box here again. Um, I, won't, I won't speak about a new short zone right now here. So that's the reason I'm deleting that one and looking to a more detailed version. Um, um, look at the uh, last 
at the last um, highs. So we will be seeing that there is another possibility of a short setup um, which would run into this uh, one, the, that 61.8 level um, very close to that 164 level. So it might be interesting to just be patient that the, the European future is running, is testing this scenario and that you might place a pending order around that 164 level, let's say at 163.98 uh, short uh, with a 20 or 30 pip, uh, excuse me, a point um, stop loss. So that's um, one uh, of those scenarios. Um, another one is um, a spoke about that um, where is it? The US dollar um, Canadian. So that loony trade is still hopping around um, 133.90s. And um, not sure if uh, this, this, this um, yeah, let's say this loony is going more up the road. Um, of course, we probably have some targets regarding those Fibonacci projections to the upside here in direction 136, of course. But um, if you have a look at the, uh, the current oil data, the current oil prices, I'm not only talking about WTI. Um, on top of talking about Brent. So if you talk about those two um, yeah, world, um, most important um, um, oil contracts, if we have something like a, a little bit of relief rally to the upside in, until the end of the year, that might lead to a, a more heavy Canadian dollar, so a more powerful Canadian dollar, and that would lead the pair more to the downside. So this could be something like a target just marking that with a horizontal line here as well of that 61.8 level here which is around the 131.50s so is it possible just a possible um, uh, trade scenario for the loony um, um, just try to get a better a better entry zone um, you might be shorting the next overshoot that's uh, that would be something like a situation to favor to favor and uh, that would be something like a perfect entry um, in, in direction to the downside. So um, favorable position would be um, a loony short. Talking about oil, we will be checking that out as well. And um, these, this is old, this old uh, chart set up here. The only thing I will delete is this trading box here. The old chart set up here is still valid. And if you check out this 161.8 level down here at 59.80s, um, um, which is already it is still still um, in test in test, so we still in pro we are still in progress to getting back up to this 138.2 uh, uh, Fibonacci retracement here uh, projection, excuse me, and uh, the 100 Fibonacci retracement at 70s. So the target the target of a couple of weeks uh, is still that um, 70 marker would be very interesting to see what kind of implications all these talks about Saudi Arabia who are willing to massively reduce uh, oil exports in direction to US. Um, what does it mean for uh, the major um, two oil contracts and for the oil market, the world oil market? So possibly negative uh, for, um, a, let's say, a couple of guys thinking about that they reduce the price leverage, uh, the price level, but uh, thinking about um, traders like us, we're favoring the bull scenario that might be positive, uh, leading the prices back up the road. So that would be favorable to, to see a next, let's say, dip um, um, to buy. So if we just get that test back of that 168 level here in the next days, it might be interesting to um, speculate on the relief back up again. All right. Um, First of all, what is it about? Yeah, Euron, Euronoki. Um, a couple of times I spoke about that. Um, the 61.8 level is um, yeah, major, the major indicator, or let's say the major trigger line. Um, once again, um, it, it could possibly get back up to this level again, and this might be a, a next short setup, a not a next short possibility for that kind of a currency pair. It's not on every day's uh, menu, let's say. Uh, Euronoki is something special, but it's interesting um, regarding the fact that you really, when you short it, you simply get um, positive swaps night, um, day, uh, night over night, and that's maybe interesting. Okay, well, let's see what the rest of the market does. Um, very, of course, very um, dangerous currency pair the last days. Um, a couple of invitations from the market around the one, uh, the the 90s, 60s level. So there was a huge spike up uh, in, in in this Euro GBP pair, um, just around those um, 
of those votes um, against um, Theresa May. But in, in the end, she survived. She survived that um, that vote of confidence. And let's see what the European Union, what Brussels is about to negotiate uh, in case of that uh, Irish backstop uh, rule in the next days or weeks to come uh, that might secure uh, Theresa May's uh, position uh, as a prime minister. If not, possibly they might kick them uh, kick her out of business and that would lead uh, to even more even more suffering pound in the long run so um, possibly a, a currency pair only to be touched when we have something like tremendous spikes uh, in direction 1 or 1 1.5% on a daily uh, basis so that might be an invitation of the market to short that one um, and the same th same stuff, of course, with uh, the cable, so GBP uh, versus the US dollar, if that happens to be the fact that we will have a 1% or 1.5% daily reaction, um, this might be a nice, a nice um, counter-trend trade. Okay, so Tim, um, a couple of questions possibly, or did I miss something, or um, possibly uh, some, some uh, special market clients are wishing no, for? No, Dirk, at the moment uh, we have no special question here for the moment. Yeah, you show us some interesting uh, markets for the moment. So, I don't know, maybe you would like to show uh, Euro USD dollar you have already, or? We, we had that one already, and okay. one thing, one thing on top maybe. Um, because I'm um, into that gold stuff um, uh, on guidance here as well. Maybe we will have a look at um, even on top of uh, the still wallet um, uh, chart setup from the um, older charts here. Because uh, this gold, this gold um, market is um, still trying to get back up in direction of those projections and the old targets. Just squeeze that chart here. The old targets to the upside are still are still at that 1270s. This is the 161.8 marker here, and, um, and this is nothing like um, let's say there's nothing like uh, too much water is running down the river. It's, it's still it's still possible that we will get back up with this market here in direction uh, with the first step at 1250s, and then the next days and weeks to come in direction to the 1270s. So. Uh, this all this depends uh, on the on the story developing uh, with the US and if you check out this fiscal data uh, the latest November fiscal data it's 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 really horror um, it's one of the the worst the worst November data um, in the last years or decades in uh, the US has a deficit um, around 200 200 billion let's just check because I don't want to I don't want to tell you guys the wrong number um, US uh, State uh, spent 411 billions of dollars in November, and the uh, state income, so the tax income and stuff like that, was just 206 billion. So the deficit is way up, way up of 200 billion in November. Um, crazy data, and we will see. We will see um, how this kind of a story is developing with uh, with uh, negotiations between China and the U.S. and between um, this this diplomatic stuff like this Huawei case, uh, which is leading to more diplomatic problems between China and U.S. and possibly on top of that uh, a so-called showdown with that uh, possible shut uh, shutdown uh, talk. So it's not off the table. Uh, just imagine if they're are to create, or Donald Trump's about to create, or to provoke uh, another shutdown um, in the U.S. history. So um, that would lead to a, a weaker U.S. dollar, and um, that would definitely uh, normally lead to um, higher gold prices. And um, you all know, um, normally in the in the case of correlation talk, um, the weaker the U.S. dollar is, the more um, commodities are going back up the road and uh, so uh, should gold do. Okay, yeah, I guess um, time's our limit, as Jens always uh, tells us. <laughs> we will, uh, we will, we will hopefully, yeah, we will hopefully have a perfect, a perfect uh, weekend, um, and then that's, that's the one thing I wanted to wish you guys. Um, have a relaxing weekend, um, Christmas markets are open, hopefully you will have the, the, the one or two uh, nice drinks, and uh, relax and have a, a perfect weekend. Thank you so far, and um, last webinar of this year will be taking place at 21st um, of December next week, Friday, 11 CT. Thank you very much, guys.
Okay, Dirk, thank you very much as well and all our listeners today. So, yeah, as uh, Dirk already said, uh, have a good trading day and uh, hopefully enjoy your weekend uh, as much as you can. So, uh, yeah, see you next week and we say bye-bye. Bye-bye.